Um, good evening. Um, I feel myself very happy to be here, to have chance to listen all these uh, excellent stories and life-changing stories. And, and I found myself in all stories, actually. One of my part has been in all these stories. And the funny one and the good one, the best one for me today. And I realized why I have done the last, last 14 years of my life, all this uh, social work and volunteer work, and I found the reason, one of the presentation, because I, born, I was born in, uh, at 4 o'clock in the morning and 4th of January. And that's now the, the clear why I'm doing all these things. And in this short, short time that I'm going to uh, try to explain and share uh, my experiences in Turkey, uh, what I have done and why I have done and how is going all the things and what I what the, what is changed in Turkey after all these things is is done by volunteers who follow uh, my journey and my journey starts is actually in Germany and I was there for my second study uh, and I studied English and Italian literature literature and while living there and while observing the lives of disabled people, people with disabilities, how they are well integrated into society, how they are active and productive. And it was for me, a, a person from Turkey, it was astonishing. And I, I really impressed of uh, their equal being in the society. And I start changing my mind and I start making a research and the situation in the world. And you know, the, uh, the World Health Organization has recently declared a report about the disability issue in, in the world. One billion people is uh, a different kind of disabilities in the world. It's like the 10% of the population in the world and affected on this, on this issue. And in Turkey, the situation is not good, not worse, but it's almost the same. It's 13% of the population it's like every one in the seven and are affected on disability problem. And the big things is what I observed and while I'm in, in Germany or in, in Europe, in different part of Europe, if we have the same number of disabled people in different countries, okay, eight million in Germany and 50 million in the United States and 8.5 million in Turkey, what is the difference? What, which difference made me on the way? And the, the big differences in, in Europe or in well-developed countries or who provides better social service and people with disabilities in the life, within the life, and very active. But the big problem in Turkey, what I, obs what I understand after, after all my visit coming back and go, coming back and go in Turkey, and I realize that the gap between where disabled people are and where they have to be is too big. It has to be close. But how? Who is going to do this? State, government, local authorities, or and classical NGOs who deal with disability problem in Turkey? And no, and maybe yes. But for my part, as a responsible citizen, responsible intellectual person who studied universities, who has all chance, uh, to do the things what he wants, and I decided, okay, it, it's, it's a joke, but in the four o'clock in the morning, after I read an article, is written by Jean-Michel Cousteau, the son of uh, Father Jacques Cousteau. Maybe you all know the Cousteau documentaries, and we, all, we all, my generation, we grew up, and all underwater documentaries of Jacques Cousteau. And I read the article, it's about diving with disabled people. And for me, the re, the, there was a sentence over there, and the Jean-Michel Cousteau has, uh, has written about his experience diving in Fiji Island with six different people with disabilities, and his, the, the sentence was like this. After diving with disabled people, and I discovered the healing and liberating power of the ocean, and that was the point Then I, I decided to change my life. I said, okay, I live my career in Germany and all this literature, literature and translating or interpreter, whatever I want to be, was, was, was very personal. Then I came back to Turkey. Uh, since then, 
1996, 1998, sorry, and I start setting up my projects to reach my big picture, to be my big goal, to have a barrier-free life for everyone in Turkey. But coming from different fields, not being doctor, psychologist, physiotherapist, or who is who has the uh, education about social service system, and just studying in literature, and you, I have to find as a social entrepreneur a strong point for myself as a start point. That was scuba diving. That's why the Jean Michel Cousteau's article was for me as the beginning beginning point and starting point because I was scuba instructor and I knew underwater world how meditative how liberated and how uh, that I can use this as a tool for for my project based on sport for social change and I immediately uh, create that project uh, and start implementing and diving with disabled people with different different type of disabilities and at the beginning, it was very luxury for the people who listen to this. Oh, diving, disabled people. It's luxury for Turkey because Turkey, uh, people with disabilities has lots of problem. You know, it's the economical problem and this and that. Why is diving? But you know, you can use any tool to reach your goal as social innovator and change maker. That was my trick point because I was very strong. I was a good instructor and nobody could touch me if I do something, that happened. And I start diving and I teach, I start teaching su full scuba diving program for the disabled people, blind, deaf, uh, people with wheelchair, crunches, polio, whatever it is. And proudly, what I can say, in this last tw 12 years, I've trained 3,000 people with disabilities and they have been in underwater. I don't know how many of you know uh, scuba diving, how the BTO underwater, but in Turkey, the biggest number in the world and who uh, people with disabilities dive is Turkey just because of this project, Diving is Freedom. And doing this, uh, while doing this uh, scuba diving program, oops, sorry. Mm. Can, can you? Immediately after diving with, with, the, with people, yeah, this can stay there, it's okay. Um, I've done a documentary film, I imitate Jean-Michel Cousteau, I brought uh, some people, uh, eight people with different disabilities and Sharm El Sheikh, Red Z, uh, to see if it's really so liberating and so, uh, then you are going to listen one person's story uh, no, it's okay. I, I just want to touch. Is there any way to touch this? Yeah. And his guys is blind from the birth. And maybe you can, I don't know, listen to the voice. And just wait a second. One of, one of my first divers, actually, it is 98, 99, and the people were asking me why these blind people are diving? Why they, what they see? Okay, we understand that the people with wheelchairs and whatever, but what is with blind people? That's why I brought this full face mask and then I let him to speak and he was very talkative and it's always the battery is finished underwater because he talk and talk and talk, but just a 20 seconds and he says that I love this life and I thank you in diving is freedom. And we can continue. And meanwhile, I, I set up another project, it's called Alternative Camp because support for social change was very uh, successful and I, I don't want to do, I didn't want to only uh, scuba diving because that was not my aim to implement my profession. But the alternative camp is a sport training and integration camp facility and all around in Turkey. What I have done, 
Bodrum, Antalya, İzmir, Van, Sinop, Fatsa, uh, and diff many other different places. And I've hosted an alternative camp, 8,000 people with disabilities free of charge. And, and their life changed because in their, in their life, first time ever they saw swimming pool, sea kayak, canoe, climbing, horse, and scuba instruments on boat and whatever. Because the many disabled people, you can, you can know from your own experience, on the street you cannot see them because they are at home, they are closed, they are out of the society. That's why breaking this social exclusion, this discriminative behavior, then we, uh, these kind of projects are very important. I got many students and participants who has never been outside at home 32 years. It's the first time ever she came to alternative camp with the force and afford, uh, encouragement of their friends. Imagine that a person, a woman, 32 years old, has never been outside at, at home. And I had lots of these kind of stories, and I don't want to demoralize you, but working with international volunteers, and I've hosted 1,000 volunteers so far in Turkey for different programs and uh, from schools. And I always touch some somewhere different here. From high schools, from universities, and even from, uh, from private sector, nowadays especially, it became very popular. And the people come and join the programs and they help and they try to want an uh, active part of the, the projects. And you see that this, the program is one-to-one, -one, it's, it's very safe, and, and the volunteers like him on the left-hand side, uh, if you don't teach him, but still he thinks that to make a, with his hand a shade of that person with cerebral palsy uh, so that, that he can swim some better. That is volunteering. And this lady is very important, Muffy Davis from uh, Utah, uh, United States. She's, she has, I don't know how many hundreds of medals. She's champion of slalom skiing. And she has been disabled in, when she was 16 while skiing. But after, with wheelchair, she, uh, while using a special device, and uh, she got many uh, awards and medals and the whatever, and she came to Alternative Camp to become a volunteer. She worked with me one month, and then I, I taught her uh, scuba diving as well. I'm just passing very quickly, because you know, touching the, the person's life is not that easy, because in thousands of thousands of people with disabilities, they have lots of problems, but they just need one window or door is open for them, you know? When they see, they just enter. And, and they, that's why their life has changed, and I'm, I'm really proud of this pro all these programs, because after that, we follow their lives. We check, what are they doing? After joining our program, many people's life were changed, and many of my students, and even that guy with the blind and underwater, he lives in Canada at the moment. He makes a radio program. And the other guy is in Red, uh, Sharm El Sheikh. He's now uh, the, the chairman or director of Turkish and uh, Family and Social Affairs Ministry. You know, he was polio. He was just one person who's making sport, but now he's in the ministry. The people became active, productive. Because first time someone touched them, showed them how to do and what to do, and that, that became the alternative camp. And as you can understand easily that there are many international participants as well, an alternative camp became a couple of times one of the best social entrepreneurial or volunteering program in the world. And because of this program in 2004, I carried Olympic torch in Athens. And we have done lots of things in Istanbul to make the cities accessible for everyone. And I'm just kidding. And maybe recently you heard about Dreams Academy because I have, I'm the founder of Dreams Academy as well. While being years and years with different, part, different type of disabilities and people from all over Turkey and the, the Europe especially, I realized that almost all of them has different talent. You know, because we are focusing on their disability and medical and sociological, psychological 
way of behaving as this, but in this social way of understanding the disability problem, you can focus yourself on their ability. Any person can do anything, you know? Just they need a, they need a chance. That's why I create Dreams Academy project, and Dreams Academy is an alternative art academy, academy who give chance to people with disabilities any kind of performing arts, music, theater, film, photography, and designing, dancing, whatever they need, they can reach. And we don't have a fixed program, we have already, but anybody, even from, I don't know, from Diyarbakir, Mardin, Samson, if they can ask us, I need piano, they have piano, it, uh, or violin, or whatever they want to get as a lesson, and, and a high level quality lesson, we, give, we provide this because we have lots of volunteer uh, trainers, artists in this program. And the, the four year, is, this is the fifth year of the program. We got uh, almost 3,000 students in the, in the program. With Dreams Academy, uh, last year in 2012, in Europe, uh, this is Social Europe Innovation. Uh, it's uh, organized by the European Commission. There was a competition, and Dreams Academy has been selected one of the best project, and one of the best in ten, actually after 150 projects. And Social Inclusion Band is another sub project of Dreams Academy. We don't give only lessons, and the guy with disabilities when they get lessons, they will jump up the second level or, or third level. They become musicians, or painter, or any other artist, they earn their life with their artistic skills now. And these guys in Social Inclusion Band, they, they are on the stage with professional volunteer musicians, and they earn their own money as musicians. And last two years, we gave 40 concerts, even Rock and Coke, FS1 now, Akbang Jazz Festival, Garanti Jazz Festival, and every month, regularly, we are in Babylon. And Working with disabled people doesn't mean that you have to be on the backside or the corner somewhere hidden, you know? That's why, insistingly, my projects, my people are always in the best places in, in Istanbul, wherever it is. And uh, this is Roxy. And the good thing is, as a, um, as a good news, actually, re recent things, social inclusion band, in June, coming month, will be Geneva. Uh, the music festival in Geneva has invited us as we will, be, we will uh, represent Turkey or represent people with disabilities in Turkey, uh, saying that music for all, music with all, anybody can be on this stage. And we have an, uh, another group, is musical group, Dreams Dance Company, and mostly people with hearing impairment. We got, this year, we prepared Greece, musical. We have 25 people on the stage, 20 of them hearing impaired and disabled. We give so sign language courses or what, whatever. And um, we have nowadays, and just closing, okay, my, my last sentence, an alternative life uh, association, which I founded, control, coordinate everything is not only for doing sport, not only doing for culture, we try to change the social system, social service system in Turkey. I know it's very difficult, but as an entrepreneur, you know, with a courageous way, we have to go on, and we know that we had so far as a big change in Turkey, maybe you uh, guys and girls and um, the ladies and gentlemen, you know that in Turkey in the last two years, change a lot about this program. Look at this, every municipality has a program, barrier-free city or accessible cities or something. They all came from our effort, not only us, but you know, all this kind of effort, change Turkey, even the terminology that was the most difficult one. You, you know that in Turkey, and the, the last 10 years, we were saying in the terminology like handicap, cripple, or something, and now the terminology is changed in Turkey, even people with disabilities or something like that, like sakat, özürlü, or engelli, etc. Even a government policy had to accept 
all this development in Turkey through our, uh, our effort. That is a, a kind of social change. And the final words, and especially private sector companies now has a big interest on doing something for the benefit of people with disabilities is a good thing. And because as long, uh, if they start employing people with disabilities, not just for giving money, not just uh, giving a credit card, but just really employing. And then I think that the, the biggest and bleeding problem of uh, disability problem in Turkey will change a lot. And thank you very much.